Okay guys, we're just outside the home office, that's uh, Marsham Road Street, sorry. And uh, we're here with, the, well, it's just an emergency vigil. And this one's actually Jonathan Bartley, uh, co-leader of the, the Green Party. So what, what can you say about what's happened today? I'm here down supporting the students who are protesting uh, about the detention, indefinite detention uh, that we have in this country. And not a lot of people are aware of it, you know, yeah. it's, it's staggering. But we are the worst in Europe for this. We detain uh, refugees and asylum seekers indefinitely in this country. We're the only country in Europe that does it. Um, about a week ago, I was at a detention centre. I was talking with those people who've been detained and I was just hearing story after story after story of abuse. Uh, these are people, remember, who are fleeing persecution, they're fleeing torture. Mm -hmm. uh, I spoke to one man who uh, was a Kurd and he'd been uh, electric shocked for about a week um, in Turkey, from Turkey. Uh, he'd been fleeing uh, you know, to get some kind of asylum uh, and he'd been found himself in detention in this country for two years. Um, now, the, the conditions that detainees are kept in, you know, three to a, a cell, and they are cells, they're locked up in these cells with just a toilet. Um, I was hearing stories of real um, mental torture because they're not told often why they've suddenly been detained okay. uh, or indeed how long they're going to be there. So some people, there are I think eight people that have been in over five years in indefinite detention. Uh, others are seven, eight uh, months at a time. I uh, met one refugee uh, from Afghanistan whose uh, wife had just had a child, he didn't get pictures of the child, he'd been waiting seven months for a hospital appointment, a hospital appointment had just come through, and the company running, the private company running the detention centre said, sorry, you can't have the hospital appointment, because we're not going to drive you there for 30 miles. Um, I heard stories of people who had broken limbs, uh, had been taken to a hospital to, be, you know, to have their bones fixed, uh, and then had been shut away in detention until their bones had healed. Then they were let out, but the medical records had all miraculously disappeared. Uh, the asylum seeker couldn't remember the hospital he'd been in, and the company running the detention centre forgot conveniently or denied they'd ever been in hospital or that this had ever happened. I mean, this is shocking. Um, there have been 29 deaths in detention since 1990. Uh, there were, have been a couple of deaths just in the last week, again, in different detention centres, and that's really why we're having this vigil here today outside the Home Office. And this is the really staggering thing, is that this detention is at the very core of the Home Office's, and that's where we're standing, the Home Office's uh, drive to create this hostile environment for migrants and asylum seekers. This is a, you know, a policy that's coming straight from the top. And we had Amber Rudd, the Home Secretary, um, justifying a court order mm -hmm. uh, just a few days ago about the deportation of Samim uh, to Afghanistan, who's facing being beheaded in Afghanistan. Yeah. I believe her uh, office has been declared in contempt of court. She was declared, our Home Secretary, supposedly responsible for upholding law and order in this country and the criminal justice system, was found in contempt of court okay. for violating a court order and deporting um, Samim, who's 22 From years old. From what I gather, there was actually a previous, uh, one of her uh, predecessors did actually was also found in contempt of court, but unfortunately, because his office was in, found in contempt of court, he didn't go to jail, uh, to prison. But would Amber Rudd actually end up in prison? Is uh, un unlikely. Well, uh, <laughs> I, I think it's highly unlikely. <laughs> but you know, um, there are about different rules for different people in this country. Um, I think she should resign. Okay. Absolutely, you, you can't have a Home Secretary that's in contempt of court. You know, it's absurd. Well, um, it's, if it's like Jeremy Hunt, I don't yeah. think so. Like, <laughs> but you know, the, the Home Office is clearly turning a blind eye. We, we had this massive expose by Panorama of the Brook House, the detention centre, and all the abuse that was going on. You know, someone went up with an undercover camera. Actually, one of the uh, people responsible for enforcing the detention, you know, turned whistleblower, and he went around with the camera, and you saw the terrible abuse that's going on. The threat of violence is constant. You're not going to get back. Move away from me unless you're accusing on you. Security compromised. Um, this is, in many respects, worse than prison. Uh, and, you know, the Home Office knows what's going on, uh, but it's turning a blind eye. Uh, and, you know, more than that, it's complicit in what's going on. So we're here saying to the Home Office, you know, this has got to stop. We need to end indefinite detention now, uh, and in the long term, we need to look at end detention permanently. Okay. Well, probably we can actually, uh, uh, well, get more publicity about this and actually uh, get it in the news, because it doesn't seem to be actually, no one seems to be uh, talking about it. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you guys. This is actually Jonathan Bartley, Green Party as at the home office and yeah there's a visual here until about uh, for another hour so come down please peace out